Good morning and welcome to Just Between Us, a lovely, lovely talk show with some great ladies today. I'm here with me mums. <laughs> we look like a bunch of mums today. We had no idea that we were going to be yellow and orange, but we, we look like a bouquet of flowers. Even I'm, the flowers. I'm Susie from Volcano. <laughs> and Kathy from Buena Vista. And I'm Kat from Soda Creek. So great. So ladies, we'll pick out our first two topics. Kath? Di uh, Patty, you can roll the dice. Number one. Number one. Okay, got it. <laughs> it is. Do you like help in the kitchen or do you like to work alone? Uh huh. And the next one. Okay. Six. It's on the economy. Uh, <laughs> do you feel you're better off economically today than ten years ago? Uh huh. Well, ten we'll soon, years ago. We'll soon before. find out from the mums. We're going to take a short break and we'll be <laughs> right back. Just between us, a spontaneous, intuitive, live television show with topics that are intended to inspire, delight, educate, and encourage. And now, back to Just Between Us. <laughs> All right, okay, Kathy. What are we doing? Here we go. We're being it is. potted is what we're doing. <laughs> potted moms here. Do you, do you like help in the kitchen? Which kitchen is that? Or do you like to work alone? Oh, I'm a loner in the kitchen. Don't get near me. I, I'm like a tyrant. People tell me, uh, you're cooking? I'm out. Oh, I like help. Do you I, not, help? not help. I like to play in the kitchen. Yeah, you know, I really do with other people. I love just that camaraderie in the kitchen. Yeah. yeah, but my kitchen's set up to where if I turn around, there's somebody there. And and, and i got to walk to the stove or to the fridge, yeah. to the sink. It's not set up like the, the triangle like it's supposed to be. So yeah. it's like everybody, get out of my way is one of those <laughs> things. <laughs> I, well, I belong to a cooking group and a dinner group and so forth. So oh, how fun. You know, I have a lot of people when I, most of the time that I entertain. And I specifically, my kitchen isn't big, but I set it up so that there is a peninsula with bar stools on the side. So they can be on one side sitting on stools. There, that I wouldn't, that I yeah. wouldn't mind. Me. And the stove is here and the sink is here and it's a big counter and right. I counter space a lot. And I designed it that way, I mean specifically. And I think it kind of depends. One of the things that, you know, at times I will go... Okay, I have to think now. You two visit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me pick up this knife, please. No, no, I'll, I have to think about what goes in here or it won't taste good. So I can't walk and, you know, and put stuff in at the yeah. same time. So that's I, why I like to be alone. But I don't mind every, I mean, yeah. that's kind of, uh, it's always been that way. That there will be lots of people. And I, I know what I decided for my last, my one of my later houses that I wanted a because I had a huge dining room and a small kitchen and I'd give dinner parties for 12 people and there would be 12 people in my kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> like, there you go. Okay, everybody shifts now. I have to move here. And they and everybody congregates and and yeah. and then you you know if you're like with a hot pan of water or your whatever mm -hmm. and it's tough you know it's tough you don't you don't want to hurt anybody right but Kathy you like everybody oh I love it I love it matter of fact I I designed my kitchen so that we I've got stations you know so there's uh an area here area here there's a butcher block here you know so right. yeah I and I I just enjoy even washing dishes with someone I think is fun yeah you yeah, know, the you soapy water, yeah, and you, get you know, I mean, yeah. just, yeah. yeah I mean, and the thing do you do floors and windows if you no. do? <laughs> 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 if only if, if, only have if I, I got a party. Have I got a place for you? You wanted a party? I'm going to have a party. Yeah. You want to come yeah, have a party? You get by yourself <laughs> there. Yeah, because, I mean, somebody will say, shall I do the salad? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I'm the type of person, I do a lot of prep. I do a lot of stuff beforehand. It, mine's just the la the last minute before we eat. Yeah. You know, if anything needs to be done. But I li I'm I'm the type that I have to have. I get everything done beforehand. Oh, not me. I'm not that. Oh, one. I do. No. <laughs> uh, it's like no, no. I just kind of wait for everybody to show yeah. up and then we <laughs> well, I might go for it. It's part of the party. Or something and I set the yeah. Table. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, the, you know, that the kind of stuff's out. And, you know, yeah. And stuff like that. I'll just you know throw it all together or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And that's when I have people say, okay, you know, shall I do the salad? And since I cook with these people a lot, I mean, right. this group, core right. group of people, right. 
they're all they know and they know each other's and habits they, yeah and we you know each other's yeah. personality yeah. especially well mm -hmm. that's fun though having a cooking group like that well i started mm -hmm. it i had it in the bay area and we Good called for it you. couples gourmet and when we were in the Bay Area, I was in it for 10 years, and it got less gourmet. <laughs> <laughs> you so went along. We the china and the crystal and the silver, and then pretty soon. It's we weenie night. It's weenie <laughs> night. <laughs> no, we didn't do that. It was, it was gourmet cooking. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But it was like we did the pottery and, you know, and things like that. Wow. And, and, uh, but, and it was like once every month or once every other month, depending on how it went. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then I started it up here. How and fun I did is that? Numbers, and then uh, we did that in newcomers, and then I just started a group, and there are twelve of us, and we rotate. I'll houses. be darned. Well, that's well, a lot of fun. At church, there was two hours between the services. Yes. And they didn't do anything, and it was an hour for drive for us to go there. So I started breakfast, and oh, good. so everybody, and it's really fun. I mean, they've got this great big commercial kitchen that's wonderful. Uh -huh. So whoever oh, shows great. up comes yes. in, and they're all in the kitchen. Yeah. You know, and it's well, it's a lot. It is fun. That's yeah. fun. You know, so and it doesn't matter who does the pancakes or the eggs or whatever. It's just you know, we just well, kind of throw everything out there. I will tell you about <laughs> it's fun <laughs> when we it's still fun. lived in the Bay Area, yeah. but we were moving up here and our kids lived up here and they were married and then a brother was in San Ramon and he was married and family and everything else, and I did a Thanksgiving dinner for twenty five people. Good for you, Pat. And it was the easiest Thanksgiving I have ever had. I had everybody bring something, and all I did was do the cook, stuff the turkey and cook it. And oh, that's table. that's fun. And, it yeah. was, and I'm going, oh, I should do this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're doing it right, 24 people. Really? That's a lot of fun. Okay, <laughs> on, to the next, on to the next okay. one. Oh, okay. yeah. No, we already did that. We did that. that. Oh, okay. Just, yeah. I already got it there. <laughs> we'll tell you <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether I got the answer, but okay, I got okay. it. <laughs> you got the question. <laughs> Do you f now, here's the key to me. Do you feel better off economically than you did 10 years ago? I don't know. It's kind of hard to say. I'm going to say no, because I have things, have, things financially have changed, mm -hmm. and we're spending more. Um, and getting less, I think, sometimes. But I don't know. I think that as you get older, financially things are supposed to be better. But I, I don't know. I don't know. My so yeah, That's true. Yeah. Tom, and yeah. Tom and I are talking about our social <laughs> secu security check. It doesn't cover like it used to. That There we go. Somebody asked me, you social security? And I'm like, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. They yes. I said they were looking for my number. Yes. Yes. Like, <laughs> no, the thing is, and I mean, Ted and I say this all the time, and that is a standard comment. I can't live on this anymore. When the government developed Social Security, it was never meant to be. be that's there true. you go. Income. That's true. There you go. A supplement to your savings. Yes. Right. And there was a whole and lot of people. And unfortunately, that's anything. changed for a lot of people. Yeah. I well, I mean, the thing is, it never was meant to be that anyway. So they right. should have been saving money. Yeah, but there could. May, but maybe they. W I mean. In their defense, it may have been that they were at the economic scale where they really didn't have the opportunity to save it. And you, you know, know what? Let's face yeah. it. Old age creeps, creeps up on you oh, awfully yes. fast, and it, it does bite you where you don't need to be bit. That's right. And yeah. then, then well, you're, you're but thinking. You know, I look at this as, as feel. Okay, so uh, what I've noticed is our, our lifestyles changed. Yeah. You know, a lot. We don't do the things that we used to do yeah. 10 years ago. And maybe we'll go down to Don Luis and share a dinner. I mean, you know, yeah. you know, ten years ago that wasn't the type of thing we did. Sure. I mean, or we'll throw the kayaks on the, the truck and yeah. go up and. And we kayak, don't have to buy know? a lot of times. We don't have to buy business attire any longer, so oh, that's, no. that's out yeah. the door. And yeah. yeah. And but well, I think that our life. I think it all. I think the the, the answer is is our, does our lifestyle embrace our income, or does it? Or is it short? Well, our, my, our, our incomes fluctuated greatly over the years because of my husband's job and because of my job. Right. I mean, it, it's just gone up and down, and we've had great years, and we've had lean years, and, you know, yeah. it's well, see, just... It's kind of funny, because people will ask Ted and me, it, do you live differently than you did before the recession and everything else? No. We live exactly the same way. We have lived exactly that way since we got married when we were 19 and 22. 
We have never overspent. We have never had credit card debt. We have never spent money where we didn't need to. We didn't take lots of family vacations. We never bought new cars all the time. We didn't go out to dinner and spend $150 at dinner in the Bay Area like all of our friends did. So, And Ted quit his job uh -huh. when he was 38 years old and opened his own business. And so then people said to me, are you concerned about not having a steady income? And I said, no. And they said, why not? They said, you have to Because you kids. planned for it. And I said, he's a smart man. Mm -hmm. I mean, and <coughs> my dad never had, he never worked for a company. I never was, my mother's dad was a farmer. And I mean, he did work for the telephone company years and years later. But I mean, so everybody was in business and I never saw anybody Independent. collect a paycheck. Right, every right. Month. Okay. And the other thing is, is we talk about this, and it's like, do we do anything different? No. We live exactly the way right. we did. But see, I, I'm and like you. I don't do the, I never went yeah. out to the dinners all the time, never right. went on vacations all the time, the whole big thing. So yeah. it, make, it makes a big difference. And you and Ted have been together since you were teenagers. He so was, he, I, was, I was a teenager. <laughs> he met me when I was 18, but he was 22. But, but that's, but that's <laughs> yeah. a big difference. Yeah. Same thing with you you, yeah. you yeah. guys. It, I it was where, 19 and 20. There yeah. you go. Yeah. We're seeing with me been now. for 47 years. So right. I mean, yeah. it's kind of, but it's interesting because one of the things is the answer is, you know, Am I better off now than 10 years ago? We had just finished our subdivision and sold all the lots. So, yes, you were. <laughs> that was a good time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you know what? She doesn't even have to answer the question. Look at her rings. And look oh, at well, her you know, her diamond is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's why we don't want her on too I often. I have turquoise. She, she has diamonds. Yeah. What can I say? <laughs> I got QVC. <laughs> what can I tell you? Well, that, you know, I looked 10 years ago. I got to think. Okay, nine, in 2000. Three, I was fired from a, a very good job. And so I thought, hmm, hmm. what do I do? I'm going to go on unemployment for a year, and we're going to build a house. So <laughs> we built a house. Good for you. And yeah. then, uh-huh, here. Okay. And yeah. you didn't let anybody scare you off. Oh, no. See, no. that's what I like. I like that. Well, that was the no. top of the economy, too. Yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't for me. No, true. <laughs> but I mean, but the thing is, when you build a house, you've been a realtor. I mean, you're a realtor, yeah, so I'm, it's kind of yeah. like, that's the one thing that I said to yeah. Ted is going to be the biggest change is nobody can use their house as their bank account anymore. Right. And I think that's yeah. the best thing right. in it, really, because they never yeah. did until this article. Yeah, thing. yeah that, I mean, that's true. I, I mean, the that's five years I before knew, that. I told Ted and mm -hmm. said, when the... When the comedy was going, I said, oh, this is going to be the biggest debacle we've had. Mm -hmm. And he said, why? And I said, never in our history have we used our houses as our bank accounts. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly and said, what's happened. And that can only sustain itself for a very short period of time. And you're having people, look and how many foreclosures and things that we have no, today where we never him, had I that said, before. I said, we're selling well, everything because it, it'll not, not be worth what it is now. No. It won't ever be worth it. we got to move on. Okay. Okay. So we got to pick two new topics. Okay. Now you can roll the dime. Roll the dime. <laughs> <laughs> Just one time because we've got a free-for-all. Three. Ah, do you have a phrase or topic that you use to break the ice to reach out first? And this is reaching out. Okie dokie. And then we're going to surprise you. We, we have our first uh, free-for-all. We're going to be talking about that. So we're going to take a very, very short break. And we will be back in two or three minutes. Just Between Us, a spontaneous, intuitive, live television show with topics that are intended to inspire, delight, educate, and encourage. <laughs> we don't Tom. know where we are today. <laughs> I'm glad Tom's here today because now I can blame him for all my good stuff. <laughs> all right, kids. We're going to do our first one is reaching out, Kathy, and it is... Okay. Do you have a phrase or topic you use to break the ice to reach out first? Hey, you. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I reached out the other night. I'll, I'll never, I said... Well, it's nice to meet you. I said, tell me your story. And she looked at me and she goes, I don't have one. I was like, nice to meet you. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you. That was, that, that was a worthwhile uh, conversation. No, I don't I know. know. I think where to go from there? Usually, usually <laughs> in the situations that I am, somebody comes in and, and they, they introduce me to yeah. somebody and I, you know, nice to meet you or whatever. And then, you know, you just start. I think it's easier for women. You start chit-chatting. And you know right away that camaraderie if you have it right away. You Hello, know, how are you, Kathy? How long was your labor? I want to know. How many kids? No, seriously. You know, you do that. 
it's it's difficult at times. You know, it just depends on because sometimes just like that is like if you get hit a wall, you know, it's like okay, where do I go from here? You know, do I do I want to continue this? My husband's calling me. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Nice meeting, nice seeing you. Bye. <laughs> well, one, my dad was. I mean, he talked to everybody. Well, he had and, to. Oh. And well, yeah. but he and and it's interesting because my brother who just died, he talked to everybody also, and I have always talked to everybody, and I, I had to laugh because I, when I came up here, people would say it was it was hard to meet people, and I said, Oh no. I met I met at least forty people in the grocery store line. I yeah. mean, and talked to them, and I've you know, and I found it. But on the other hand, I have moved twenty nine times since I've been married. Right. I have lived in seven states. I have lived in a whole bunch of houses, and they you know, with neighbors and things like that. And I just start talking to people, and one of my things is you well, know, it's survival for you. Because that's how you, you know, moving mm -hmm. so much. Did you, did you and Ted hop freight trains illegally? Or something? <laughs> <laughs> because no, we did. Twenty nine times. Twenty nine times. Yes. You moved. Mm -hmm. So one time, yeah, I got you beat me. Was, what three times? In one oh year? no, eight times in a year and a half oh. with two small children all oh, over the country. My. Oh wow. And uh, we actually got to Hawaii and we went to a double feature and we came out at midnight and we couldn't remember what town we were in or what car we were driving and we had two kids at home with a babysitter and it was midnight. Or what time zone? Um, oh my well, it was boy. Hawaii and it, we had had yeah. summer for months because we had lived in Alabama in the summer and we, I mean, in, in Alameda and then we went to Hawaii and it was summer and it was this October, November, I don't know, anyway, and it was just like, it was hot and humid, and we had had hot and humid, and, we, and we'd gone into a double feature. We saw Chinatown, where we lived in West L.A., and we saw Cinderella Liberty. We had just moved from Seattle, and we went, well, I came out, and he said, where are we, and what car are we driving? Because we'd have company cars, and we'd ship our cars, and, oh my. You know, and oh. drive, you know, have somebody drive our cars places yeah. and things like that, and, but we had two kids at home with a babysitter, and we thought, we better figure this out, because it was dark. Well, there, boy, you can really, you can really break the ice with a conversation. So, Hi, oh, I'm we here could, for two We weeks. couldn't find anybody to talk to to say, what town are we in? <laughs> it oh, just was so like funny. a snap thing, but, so yeah. I just talked to people. I mean, and I've always just talked to people. I did when I was a little kid. I mean, I would talk to them about things, ask them questions, and, you know, if you say the right stuff, people really like somebody who's interested in them. Right. Have you, noticed, but have you noticed that when you talk to, like, someone that's much, much older than you are, how your conversation is different than with somebody your age or somebody that is much younger than you are, how your conversations, how you pick different topics and you go with different things? Or is it just me, Kathy? Uh, it's not <laughs> me, but I think it, and I don't think it's just you. I'm trying to think. Because I mean, it's kind of hard to converse with somebody that's, say, 20, 30 years younger than you. You're, you're, you're not, they're not grandparents yet. And you know, I, I find that difficult, too, and I didn't think that I ever would. But um, I was in, well, Tasha's nail salon yesterday, and she was doing the nails of a young girl that's going to graduate today. Uh -huh. And, you know, they had a great conversation, and I thought, I would have trouble, you know, with this conversation. But it was kind of interesting just sitting there listening to the, you know, kind of being part of it. I yeah. don't know. I mean, again. Yeah. <laughs> You just talked to me. I just talked to Pat people. Just, <laughs> part of my problem is like I got to thinking about I have one son, grandson that graduated from eighth grade last night. Oh, yeah, cute. And yeah, he it was cute. And I watched these kids, his friends, grow up, but I can't remember their names. You know, and I thought, okay, that's okay. Hey you, <laughs> hey you, how you doing? I know I see him maybe once every three months, but you know, <laughs> I'm well, we got to go on to our okay. next topic, and it is. Yeah. It's our first free for all, and we're going to talk about graduation and how kids have changed, how graduations have changed, the speeches by the teachers, and different things. So that opens up the door for you because you just went to one last night. I so, did. So how'd you do? I did okay. Okay, not great, but I'm kind of rating my scale here because I was with a group of adults that were with kids that you know were my grandkids' friends, and and we had some fun conversations. But then other kids would come up, and I'm thinking, I should know you. <laughs> Hi. How's it going? But did you notice? Have you noticed that how how much more casual and yeah. and how how much more attentive that they are to when like when we were there we couldn't wait to get that cap and gown off and hooray I'm out of here. But the speeches, the principal speaking to them and and.
praising them and telling them that you know that you're going to go well not our mm -hmm. grandkids sons at this age but you're going to go out into the world you know when you're when you graduate from high school and college or you're going to embark on a new adventure and take different avenues and it's going to be different and it's so much different than I think that when we graduated maybe it was I wasn't paying attention probably well, what I noticed last night this was what I own and then uh -huh. I own I think he was a superintendent or not the superintendent but the principal that was giving the, the speech and he said that this group of kids was one of the kindest groups of kids he's ever seen but that's it, the, but that's Amador County they just the way they watched out for each other yeah. and he said yeah. he broke up a fight at the beginning of the year but he said when he realized what the fight was about and what was it was about protection Mm -hmm. and how they were really protecting each other. He said, and he said, I thought about it all through the year. It was the, that whole, these are my kids and these are my, you know, my buddies and, right. you know, how they just kind of watched out for each other. I think, yeah. I think what's remarkable today is that children that have um, special needs, how accepting were in our yes. era their own classroom and 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 you know you don't want to cross that boundary because you don't know how to converse or whatever right. and um, when when Courtney when my granddaughter was a freshman um, the principal asked to talk to um, my my son-in-law and my daughter and he in they thought oh gosh he's only been here a short time now what mm -hmm. and so they went in there and he said I want to thank you for raising your daughter she said we have a child that had that is autistic and we have a special needs child that is in a wheelchair. And your daughter went up and took that child every day for lunch and sat with her and, and talked to her. And the special needs child made sure she got in her classroom, the whole thing. And she was new and a freshman. And she goes, mm -hmm. it just came to her naturally. And Paul said, Oh, he says, well, that's just the way we've raised our kids since they were small because they had a cousin that had cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. And so when I raised my children, um, and her name was Susie, there was no, it was hard to, um, it was hard for her to converse with us, but we, we learned. And there was nothing there. When we saw Susie, it was Susie. We loved her because she was Susie. And that was just the way that it was. God bless you. Thank you. But um, I think that that is the one big stride that I've seen children make today. There mm -hmm. is... There is no, there are no barriers when it comes to reaching across. They're not afraid to reach across, and I think that's out. That's the way it's supposed to be. Well, you know, it all goes back to ignorance of these kinds of things. Right. Yes. Make it, people are afraid of something they don't understand. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's different. Mm -hmm. And now I don't know why it was, but when our kids went through the Arenda School District, we the um, special needs kids classroom was di you know it was different but the kids all played together at recess and no those kids were included in every birthday party they were included in, you know in sporting events i mean there was a boy who was a dwarf and my f friend who was the speech pathologist she said i'm really worried about him when he grows because he doesn't think he's different than anyone else how wonderful and um and it was interesting. He went to college. He became the student body president oh of goodness. this college. Oh, wonderful. And he's a successful man in business. And, and speaking of that, Pat, look at the little couple, Dr. Yeah. Jen and mm -hmm. her husband, and they've yeah. adopted two children, one from China, one from India, and they mm -hmm. both um, um, have the same um, dwarfism yeah. as, as their parents. And they are the most endearing couple. I will never miss an episode. I love to watch the challenges that these two little kids mm -hmm. um, are going to be making. And Jen and, and Bill treat them no different. They yeah. are no different than any other child. And, and Jen well, that's is a very way. popular <coughs> yeah. guy, uh, um, a pediatrician in, in Texas at Texas yeah. Hospital. And I mean, and then that we, uh, down the street from my best friend, kid was a phasic and he came to all the birthday parties and, there you go and I mean he was he, he's never been able to work he lives on his own in a group home he's now in his 40s but uh, 
it was kind of like nobody centered on this, you know, mm -hmm. this, and the kids just kind of like, oh, you know. And that's what's great. And that's what's really good right. because they weren't afraid well, of I it. Well, I think the, the way we were raised was because the way our parents were raised and it's the way that they were raised by our grandparents. And I think it was out of respect that you didn't want to reach across. But at my school, it made, it made no difference. We always, you know, that was the way my parents raise me. Yeah. You don't judge a person on their their um, their sex, their color, their race. Um, right. N none of that, yeah. you know, and uh, that was just the way that it was. But because I lived in such a small community and a lot of it was family, I really didn't have to worry about about a lot of that. Anyway, okay. we've got to move on and we are going to take our last two topics. Okay. And okay. they are... Okay. Three, two. Marriage. Marriage and relationship. What is one of the most essential factors to a successful relationship marriage? Okay. Relationship okay. or marriage, huh? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a, uh, well, then we've got another free-for-all for you okay. that we're going to throw at you. But we're, before we do that, we're going to take a uh, very, very short break. And we're going to be back. And the mums are going to tell you what they think. Just between us a spontaneous, intuitive, live television show with topics that are intended to inspire, delight, educate, and encourage just between us. No matter what. We're, We're back. back. I'm Susie yeah. from Volcano. Welcome back. I'm Kathy from Buena Vista. And I'm Pat from Sutter Creek. Okay, we're going, we've got a free-for-all, but let's do the first, let's do the marriage and relationships okay. first. Kathy. Okay, what is one of the most essential factors to a successful relationship or marriage? Communication, which means listening. Um, well, my theory is, is that you have to be friends, and you have to be able to communicate. Mm -hmm. But, I mean... And you have to have fun together because, I mean, we've been together for 47 years and we still laugh about things. We still talk to each other about stuff. We have fun together. I mean, we tease each other. You know, and, things, and if you don't, I mean, and you have to respect somebody. If you don't respect right. them, right. then... I mean, I don't think you can love them. I don't think you can care about them if you don't respect people. And trust them. And trust them. Yeah. Right. And, mm -hmm. and so, and I mean, and the other thing is, is that I also see couples and, and it makes me, it, it just frustrates me because it's like you put unrealistic ideas of how things should be. And I remember one time my best friend and I were talking <laughs> because her husband had hired this guy and he'd just gotten married. And the guy was late for work because he didn't kiss his wife goodbye before he went to work. And then she, he brought, had to leave early and bring flowers home. <laughs> Oh, she cried oh, and, oh. And, and so forth and she said remember when we used to cry about a lot of things we don't have time to cry about anymore <laughs> no, that, now you see him coming with flowers you go what the hell do you have <laughs> yeah. well, speaking of marriage today's my second anniversary so congr oh, I, I, I want to congratulate my husband for putting up with me for <laughs> 24 months but I also want to wish him a happy birthday we, we got married on his birthday oh, I said now me. okay no you can't forget you nothing can't forget Huh? You hear the I, said, no, I, you know, I told him. I said, you know, your birthday's coming up. I said, you got enough underwear to last you for a year or two. And I don't know anything more about tools. So how about if we get married? He goes, that's the best present I ever had. We're going to say no. But it's, it's something that he wanted. So uh, happy birthday to my love and happy anniversary. Well, see, that's that, cute. That's that cute. also brings up the thing about we laugh is that Ted is he doesn't remember dates. And, I mean, and when I, I first married him. You don't him, think that I married well, him on his birthday to and remember the truth? <laughs> and I told him, it's oh. very simple, John. 6-6 six, six <laughs> equals 12. That's the, year, that's the year that we were married. Yeah. He goes, that's really good. But he won't remember that. Oh, because the thing is, when, when Ted proposed to me and he says, I, I want to get married on July 1st. And I said, is there a special reason? Because I hadn't even known him six months. And so... <laughs> Is there a special thing about July 1st? He says, yes, it's the beginning of the fiscal year. Then I will always <laughs> <laughs> There he is. He's, He's an engineer. engineer. He's an engineer. You know? And 
that you was knew cute. You knew when you were married, you think that he remembers. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, oh, the these, physical years. Yeah, phys, phys, physical, physical years. Well, he well, still physical. didn't. He still didn't remember it. Oh. And I mean, so I don't have to blame it on you know the age that he is now. He didn't remember it when he was twenty-three. That's how she got and all those diamonds. Yeah. That, that's it. No. That's it. You know, she no. he was physically no. minded. Yeah. So, and so, but then after we'd been married for a couple of years, and I was making him a cake, and he, most of the time his birthday falls on Thanksgiving, and I, he says, so why are you making a cake today? And I said, because it's your birthday. And he goes, oh, it is? And I say, <laughs> you know, if he doesn't remember his own birthday, there's not a chance that <laughs> he's going to remember all this stuff for things that he didn't have his whole life. <laughs> and so now, I mean, it's just like, you know, I would go to the gift center and one day he sat down and he says, that's a really pretty bracelet, is it new? And I said, yeah, I bought it today. And he says, was it a special occasion? And I said, well, it's our anniversary today. <laughs> oh, here. And Let it me was give you my time. <laughs> Let me give you a work. check. <laughs> oh, gosh. But I mean, but do that's you see cute. why we, we yes. you know, because of which <laughs> Great. You, I mean, some people would take it an absolutely no. opposite way. Yeah. But this is wonderful. Well, and, I mean, yeah. and even my, you know, my daughters-in-law yeah. and and when the kid, the boys have had girlfriends, they said, "Doesn't this bother you?" And I said, "He's here, 365 yeah. days there a year. Go. He there doesn't go. go to bars. He comes home right after. He doesn't, you know, spend money. He doesn't, you know, he takes good care of us." He just had, and I said, and I do not understand why an engineer has problems remembering numbers. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cute. But that is cute. That, that's the thing that's per perplexed me for over 47 years. You know, he doesn't like, remember doesn't numbers. remember numbers. That's cute. <laughs> and Kathy, you've oh. been married how many years? It'll be 50 next summer. Right okay. on. Yeah. So I can add all mine up. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to add a couple yeah. of them up there. Yeah. But what the hell? As long as you're with the person that you love and you respect, and there's a good yeah. communication and you listen, there's right. trust there. Y you can't go on. You can't go wrong. We have to move on to okay. our free for all, and we're going to talk about uh, something kind of a little bit political. It's kind of like we were talking uh, we, during the break. We were talking about how morgan freeman made one of the best comments i have heard in a long long time they were asking him they were talking about um, economic you know different economic mm -hmm. things and and is there a race issue when it comes to economics like and yes there are areas where uh... suppressed areas where it's harder for people to get education we all know we all know yep. the, the scoop mm -hmm. but they asked him uh... you know does color really make a difference and whatever he said no it doesn't and and they asked him, well, what do you, wh wh how can you say that? And he said, because you're looking at it. I came from a poor black family, and here I am, and I'm a very wealthy, successful actor, and I never let color or race or anything get in my way. And I thought, you know what, that is fantastic. But why do you feel that all of a sudden we still are faced with people saying, if you say anything against the president, oh, well, that's because you're a racist. I mean, why do people still have to go back and use this when I will guarantee you 100% of my friends don't look at, at, at the president and see a black man. They see the president of the United States. Well, now, okay, I have a kind of a different take because most of the people that I know were not raised in the South. They didn't live in the South. Right. And I did. I mean, I grew up until I was almost 15 in Oklahoma. And then I had lived in Mobile, Alabama, and and you're talking about the 50s in in the in, in well, and I in lived in the 60s in the Alabamas, and I lived in Alabama right. in the late 70s, right, and uh, in Mobile, and to give you an example of prejudice, I moved into we moved into a neighborhood. I got a note from a neighbor saying. We know you're new to the neighborhood. I'm, we're going to have a woman's coffee get together next week. Please come. So I and it said no need to RSVP. Just stop in. And so I went to the door. The woman opened the door. This was in a beautiful neighborhood. I mean, it you know it they were like huge houses on large pieces of land mm -hmm. and gorgeous area and so forth. And so these people were educated and so forth the hostess came she stood there and there was about six other women that came in right behind me and she said and I said I'm Pat Formigley 
and she said, oh, you're the new neighbor. And she says, what part of Mobile did you move from? And I said, well, we didn't. We're from California. Oh, boy. And she and the group of women that were around me, this is the hostess, turned around and walked away from me, and no one spoke to me. And so the thing is, what it is, is it's there, it, you get people who are compartmentalized. I, I, I totally and get so, it. And that but, hasn't but gone today, away. No, today, it hasn't gone away. But today, in the South, hasn't the South changed some? I mean, for me, I haven't been there, but the whole thing is, it's all, it's, you know what, people are afraid of what they are not familiar with and what they don't know True, about. I get and that. And that's, that's not necessarily education-wise or whatever. But why it's do you feel that people still have to keep this up? They're of a certain faith. They're of a certain color. But they're of a certain, I don't, I mean, but why do now, people do that? Because Susie, I have been in 15 different uh, states. We've moved a lot. Yeah. And in the my experiences, and we've lived on Indian reservations. We've lived in um, we've lived in New Mexico. I taught in Pecos, which is a lot of uh, you know um, they they came from Spain and we came up through Mexico yeah. and came in there and they did not like. But I was never felt the prejudice. I never, no, we never I never, and but I don't think there are is, is parts, but, uh, but for the most part, I don't think there are. But my but question is, is when you why get would to they know ask? them? Yes. 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 My no, question no, no, is, no. is that, no, 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 it wasn't when they got to know them. That was, I never had it, whether they knew me or not. Now, so I have a feeling that it depends on where where what? you are, and I think things have changed. All right, but why do you feel that they changed? Somebody would have to ask Morgan Freeman that question, because I think what they're trying to do is I think that there's a, a group of people out there that want to pr um, propagate I, and to continue the race issue, but I don't think that it's there. I I don't think it is as prevalent as the what we want to say, our press or whoever is doing, out there want us to feel. I don't I, think I know. And well, the only, yeah. the only thing that I do feel is, I mean, you, you know, people are prejudiced against Italians, they're prejudiced, you know, I mean, you name it. And the, the prejudice evolves from, I think, fear of the unknown. Not knowing. Because anything, and yeah. at least we're evolving somewhat as a society where, you know, we're more I just, I'm just sick and tired of people always using this political correctness thing about bringing up somebody's religion, somebody's uh, 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 political affiliation, somebody's race or whatever. You know, it, it's it's it, it, when it, when they keep doing it, it just it just sets things back, and we're going backwards instead of forwards. And you know, we just we need just to it, constantly move forward. But I well, think we have. From I think we have moved forward, and that's why I'm thinking. You know, we need to look at where we are today. Then when you're sitting it, down, yeah. when you're sitting down with a, su a successful actor or actress, then ask them ask them an intelligent question. Don't sit there and ask them something about, do you still think, uh, you know, uh, because, uh, because you're black, do you feel this and that? I don't think that those questions are necessary. Go on his acting ability or whatever. We're going to take a short break and come back and hit you up with our hot topic. Hi. Welcome back to Just okay. Between Us, and we're getting ready for our hot topic, and we're going to talk about voting and the low turnout we had. I mean, throughout the state, what a low, low turnout. And uh, the thing that totally floored me, and it didn't even dawn on me when I did my ballot, was Leland Yee was still on the, on the I guess he was still on the ballot. And what for? Well, they didn't say it already ballot, had the print, ballots printed, obviously. Know, but he got votes. Yeah. I mean, how <laughs> ignorant can you be? <laughs> Ten <laughs> percent. You do realize a lot of people don't read or listen to things. Well, please don't vote. You know, gosh, oh my. And let's hope that they didn't vote for him anyway. <laughs> well, you got ten percent. Somebody voted yeah, for him. Somebody voted for him. Yeah. But so. I, mean, I think, you know, I mean, I'm hoping that those people just forgot. <laughs> that he, oh, what happened? He's been indicted and then he's been pulled off the ballot and they just gun decide, running and oh, everything maybe they else. let him do it anyway. You know? I'm for gun control, but I'm running guns on the on, on the on the down low there. Well, I mean, and the other thing is, is if you stop and think about it, we have what 
two indictments and then one that is hasn't been indicted and he's right. just on leave and they're all and you kind of think, yeah. okay, so is he the one or is the other one? Now, who's the one that I'm not supposed to be? Do you think, do you, but you, do you feel that we've had, we're having a lower percentage of people voting? I mean, with absentee ballot folks, there's, there's, no re there's no reason. You know, I mean, even though, yeah, even though this was just, you know, it your, your primary. primary. Yeah. But still, I mean, don't you feel that it's your, re I mean, it, it's, it's your responsibility it is, but to, to get out and vote. I think that there are so many people, and this is unfortunate, that have just had it with the people that are in office. And... That's the change. Oh, the first time? First time we've had an open primary. Yes. Okay, yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So it was, and it was kind of like <laughs> the top two. So, you know, what, what you voted for wasn't necessarily meaning in that the person party. is going yeah. to be. Right. Yeah. He's just, go, he or she is going to be in the, the election in the fall. In the fall. And so that's probably, I think, the, I think people are getting disgusted with all the politicians. I mean, I sit there and think, okay, so who's good? And... I know my husband sat through and he, and he just took all of the political flyers and threw them in the trash. And he said he had read a, a thing about, is sure. it true? Yeah. Is mm -hmm. it not true? Is it somewhat true? Is it a complete lie of all the advertisements? And uh, most of them came through as that they were misleading. Oh, you know? well, I, mean, yeah. I, think the yeah. worst, I think the worst part for me is, is the getting on the, doing the ads and, and bad-mouthing the opponents and stuff. Run on your own merits. Forget about what right. the other person's mm -hmm. done. If they've done bad and people know they've done bad, that's votes in your pocket. Mm -hmm. And if they're if they're true blue loyalist to, to the other person, then they're going to they're gonna back that person up. And as but the nuns used to say, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Call me. Call me. I want to know. <laughs> but that's human nature. Human nature wants to know the dirt. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it really. And maybe sometimes it it's best that some of it. But, I yeah. mean, in essence, it's none of our business. Well, that's when, you, when you think about Although, it. except for the guy who never voted. When I, did, I saw that little, I, like, he's running and he's never voted? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but do, did you read the background of why he's never voted? No, I didn't. Okay. Yeah. There was now an see, there was bad. an editorial there was an editorial <laughs> in the B and it was a retired colonel who lives in Rancho Cordova or somewhere and he's and he said this guy was I mean he's a West Point grad and he was he's been in the military up until just recently mm -hmm. and he's out of the military he said that is a standard thing in the military when they are active duty and especially when they're in Afghanistan or wherever, which this guy did, I think, one or two tours, he said, this is a standard thing with military personnel. They are, they are working for the President of the United States. They are working for the U.S. government. They are not politically, they don't want to feel party affiliated. It's like... The I president can, is their commander in chief, and he said so. He is there the are he said there are many, many, many soldiers who, when they're in active duty, do not register and do not vote because be it. He says when you start reading the ballots and getting involved, then you start. How would we know? And, we never count them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really. Well, no, but there's there. It's it's. And he said yeah, when in right. my command, he said, you know, we never. They never voted. I mean, today, they, they today no, and no they said they were. It everybody. wasn't like they made a big deal about it. He said, I, "He said when I was in active wasn't duty, it, I never." Wasn't it one that they said the, the the ballots didn't come back in enough time, and they and they tossed them. They didn't even. Oh, you mean I, I from, don't know. Uh, when they were on active duty, yeah, and the ballots. Yeah, came yeah they back? got they got rid of them because but they this said. This guy said he said yeah. he says that my friends that I was in. He says we didn't vote. Well, I'm because, sure that yeah. That, said, right. So he says don't think of this man as an oddity. So that's what that kid did when he walked away from his post. He was looking for a polling <laughs> booth. We're gonna take a short break. We'll be back and wrap it up for you. That just between us, a spontaneous, intuitive live television show with topics that are intended to inspire, delight, educate, and encourage. Welcome back. If you need to get a hold of us, we're at 223-4877, or you can fax us at 223-4866, or you can email us at bookme at tspntv.com. Patty, I wanted to throw something out. 
I was in your in your back old backyard the other day. I went down to St. Mary's um, last Friday, and Alhambra softball. The girls, okay. they took the championship for their division. So uh, I said, "Oh, Patty lived, used to live around <laughs> right, here, and that's where our older son and our daughter-in-law. There and our you go, brother, and our." Grandson, who's going to be ten years old, is already he ha he is saving his money to, to go, go to St. Mary's. St. Mary's, beautiful yes. college. My cousin Tommy went there. Anyway, I wanted to tell you, uh, my husband was raised in that area in Lafayette, off of. Uh, so he took me for a little tour and all the places that they lived and in that. So it was a lot of fun. So I meant I meant to mention congratulations to the uh, to the girls from Alhambra Avenue, uh, Alhambra Avenue, <laughs> Alhambra High School, and um, I will. Uh, I, I, it, it, it was just it was just great it was it was so much fun went undefeated shut them out five to nothing and Carondelet so it was hard for me being against a Catholic school uh, in Alhambra but but we did it well, anyway girls I want to thank you for being I want to thank you for be for being here today Kathy keep up the good work kid Patricia don't move on us <laughs> Don't move. Tell Ted, no, you have to stay here for, at least let her stay for another well, year or two. Well, it's funny. We always do landscaping and we move and now we're getting ready to think about landscaping. I said, I don't think I want to put in any. <laughs> <laughs> Even when we say we're not moving, if we landscape, we move. And our, our older son told his wife that when he married her. He says, when they landscape, they're moving. He says, they're a no, nature no. couple until they put the house up for sale. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Oh. And, and, uh, and uh, have a good time at your class reunion. I mean, your family reunion but, if oh, I don't see you. It'll be nice. You're going to be busy in that that kitchen and having fun with yes. all those all that family yeah, with five grandchildren in, in the house fun. at the same time so mm -hmm. oh that'll be great time. ted yes. will move without you <laughs> <laughs> and tonight's graduation at tonight's graduation and matter of fact we want to congratulate austin yep. who is uh behind the scenes here and we want to graduate congratulate austin he's going to be graduating and we'll miss you with that we want to sign off and tell everybody have a great weekend